This is the Amp Hour Podcast, recorded January 27th, 2014, episode 182, Caliphatient Cuckoo Line Cash. Welcome to the Amp Hour. I'm Dave Jones from the EEV blog. And I'm Chris Gamble of Contextual Electronics. Hey, dude. How's that going? You just started. Uh, yeah, we're a week in. It's, uh, it's uh, overwhelming. <laughs> it's overwhelming, a, right? Yeah. <laughs> in yeah. what way? Uh, it's just a lot of stuff. Like a lot of stuff that I didn't think of. You know how it is on any project, right? I mean, it's like right, you, right. you think, oh yeah, I've got a, I've got a schedule. I've got a I've got a plan. I I know what I'm gonna be doing, and then <laughs> kaboom, it's Chinese New Year, or kaboom, it's you know like your production <laughs> facility closes its doors. You know, like yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. It's nothing that extreme, of course, but it's uh, you okay. know it's just always yeah. it's always the yep. things that uh, you don't plan for. Yep. So exactly. Uh, but I thought you had like the videos done and stuff. What's the, what do you have to actually do? Ah, uh, well, yeah, a lot of them are done, but it's, um, some of it is watching myself from four months ago and be like, oh, no, that's stupid. Yeah, why, did I, why didn't I explain <laughs> it that way? Or? You're an idiot four months ago, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it's you know it's redoing stuff. It's like like any other project, you know. You got to redo right. stuff. You got to yeah. You got to tear yep. it back up and start over again. And and you know it's just you know interacting with people too. It's okay it's just time. So, but it's it's it, overall it's it's great. I mean, great crowd. A lot of amp hour listeners. Uh, so excellent. Uh, you you helped out by writing about it, so thank you for that too. Yeah, and, uh, last minute, like five hours left or something you know, to sign up. Oops, sorry. Be- better late than never. Better late yeah. than never. Oh, I think we got. I think I got like twenty people signed up or something. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. that's great. So, that's and, right. Uh, and there will be another sign up in uh, about four months or so. Once I, you know, recover, take a holiday and recover. Yeah, well, I got to finish this first, and if I survive <laughs> it, and then I recover. Yeah, right. So. It, I'm sure you guys will hear all about it throughout. I'll I'll be you know ranting and raving yep. as we as we go through it. And of course, you'll be filthy rich and sitting on a throne of cash, and you can tell the no, don't think that's you can tell the happen. man to stick it. And yeah, don't know about the the throne of cash. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I did mention it is uh, Chinese New Year. In case anyone heard, did not hear about that. It is what. Uh, Three or four days. When does now? it start? Oh, I, yeah, I don't know. I didn't know when it actually started. I think it's the thirtieth. I think that's the official start date, oh, which right. would actually so be the twenty. Not... If 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 you're hearing about it now and you, and you didn't know, you're you're already screwed. So just <laughs> sorry, you're out of luck. It's uh... <laughs> and how long does it go for? I, I always think forget. It, I think it's officially a week, but it's like practically two weeks. And then right. there's always very, you know, it's kind of like how Christmas is, at least around here in the States. You know, it's officially a couple days and there's a couple official yep. days off. But then, uh, you know, some people are gone for four weeks. You know, they, yeah, like exactly. That. So same, the same company kind of opens, but they're in limited sort yeah, of yeah. mode. Yeah. Yeah. You right. know, probably uh, I'd say things are probably going to get back to normal probably about, you know, mid-February over there. That's right. probably a, a safe bet. I'm, I'm, I'm curious. How many days holidays to Chinese? Uh, workers get every year. I don't know. That is that is a here good in Australia. I, it's four weeks. Really? That's yeah, crazy. It's four weeks. Well, last I worked full time. Yeah. Oh yeah. Right. <laughs> it's four years. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, your it's boss doesn't give you any time off now, right? You don't. Uh, <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> definitely don't just disappear on the amp hour. <laughs> <laughs> Uh yeah, I I don't know. I, I know. So I've talked to people about. So I know some people in India, and in India it's kind of weird because it's like. Uh, they they work a lot of the the holidays, or sorry, they don't have like big stretches of time off, but they'll have a lot of like little right. holidays here and there. But like a, a like, higher higher number, where it's like you yeah. you wouldn't expect. It's like just like a Wednesday, no one's there. Yeah. And uh, right. But I know this is a big time in China, and, and it's it's interesting too looking at that across. You know, like you know, I'm I'm always very <laughs> self centered, and it's like you're gonna look up, you're like, oh yeah, of course there's other holidays. It's like no, of course, Dave, you don't celebrate. 
like July Fourth. That's that's stupid. Why no, would you exactly. celebrate? I don't, you know, Independence yeah. Day. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> no, dumb. our big holiday is at Christmas time. I mean, companies shut down. Some of them shut down for a month over Christmas month. time here in Australia. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, and they force you. A lot of companies, a lot of big companies, they will actually force you to use your annual leave yeah. during that period. You know, usually it might be say two weeks. You know, a big company might. That's not sort of you know service, public service oriented. You know, yeah, that, you know, right. doesn't just ship products every day or something like that. So some sort of engineering company. Yeah, we we might you know common to take two weeks off over Christmas, forced pretty much in quote marks. Yeah, you know? right. You well, and that's of, and. Like since two thousand nine, that's kind of been the thing over here too, because they're like, oh well, right. it's a factory shutdown, so it's like you can either right. not get so paid you, or take your holiday. Or, or <laughs> yeah, you usually choose to yeah either take take it unpaid or you can use your holidays up. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Exactly. Yeah, like you, my accountant, it just shuts down for all of January. You know, it's like, really? like from before Christmas, <laughs> he's not back until February. You know, it's like oh, Ooh, that's a nice, you know? that's a nice. That's yeah. like that's like the European style, where like all of your August, like Germany's gone. Uh, <laughs> I think. <laughs> right. I think that's the one. It's like there's like a certain month where everybody in Europe just kind of goes to beaches, and you know. Okay. Right. Sounds nice. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> but no, uh, not around here. Uh, ah well. So uh, yeah, this is our first show back with just me and you for a while. It's been uh, someone was on holiday a couple of weeks ago, and then we had yeah, well, I two guests on holidays, around. and I yeah, I sat on a beach literally. I tweeted yeah. a couple of photos of my pasty white legs sitting oh, on the beach. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's good. Y'all uh, relax. Posted a photo of the wife in the bikini too. She I didn't like that too much. No, that's uh, that's surprising. <laughs> So the guy that wrote a book on relationships, huh? Online dating and relationships. Uh, yeah, that's you're doing. Yep. You're batting a thousand there, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> How to oh, easily goodness. get through a divorce online? Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, dear. Everyone's scrambling to Twitter now. To see. <laughs> Quickly, oh, just d- d- delete it. Delete it, Dave. <laughs> right, yeah. Delete something on the internet, sure. Yeah, That's right. It'll just, it'll just go right. away. No. <clears throat> well, something uh, that I... doesn't go away yeah, is the that? bloody... Um, the, well, it's everything you do on the internet is now... Uh, well, you don't even have to be on the internet. Because oh, you the gonna... NSA is... Yep. Yeah. Yeah, yep. yeah. So I, I, I wrote, I wrote this comment to you, but y- you know, we, we already, uh, we already talked about this when you were gone. Me and me and Mister, er, oh. sorry, Doctor Char- Charvat. Yeah. Oh, We've, okay, right. Yeah, but, but actually, did you talk about the link that I no. put up? Uh, oh, well, you haven't seen it. These are actual data sheets. These are data well, sheets for their spy products. Yeah, I, ha- I, we did talk about those a little bit, but you know, I, I have to say, uh, Greg didn't look at them beforehand. And I was mm-hmm. I was expecting you to be there and to get some of your your conspiracy craziness. So so bring it on, man. <laughs> what did, what did you like about this? Because there there is some fun little gear in there. I mean, it's it's pretty impressive oh, yeah. stuff. Oh, some of it is, and some of it's well, you know, like meh. You know, what, it's what's pretty the ordinary. Meh? Oh You're well, you like, know, a little like uh, there's a little like homemade like somebody in the NSA lab has just like hand soldered this, and it looks like. Um, uh, like hand soldered sold uh, this uh, PCB, <laughs> right? Yeah, they yeah. haven't even, right. They haven't even like refloated. It's looked like somebody's just hand soldered this and like hand etched uh, copper, and you know uh, this little miniature uh, RF, uh, you know, microphone spy transmitter thing. It looks like something I made when I was eight years old. You know, one of those <laughs> FM bug things. Yeah, Except, well, right, this one's right. a bit more advanced. It doesn't just transmit on the FM band. It actually uh, pulse width modulates a uh, square wave, and then they fire a radar at it, and it, you know, and they get the modulated return. Right. Um, but which know, is why I thought Greg still... was going to be so into this because uh, Mike Osman wrote right. into us about it, and because uh, yeah. it is radar based. But yeah, yeah, it's a it's a cool little yeah. you know, mm. I don't know, it's, it's a cool little thing. It's a little spy yeah. device. Read James I Bond assume Ian. these came from um, Edward Snowden. I don't know the source. I, I presume it oh, is. Oh yeah, I think you're um, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's got to be. But I've but this is cool because they're the actual data sheets, like with top secret written on the top with the National yeah. Security Agency, and they even yeah, tell you the cost of them. You know, here's the yeah. data sheet from 24th of July 2008, and yep. Hey, what's that heavy breathing I can hear at the other end of the heavy line? breathing? Yeah. Is it someone sign on? Yeah. 
I, I think somebody's monitoring monitoring our uh, oh, transmission no. here. <laughs> and uh, he's a creeper. <laughs> yep, we've been automatically flagged, and uh, <laughs> and we have our own satellite by now, folks. That's right, yeah. <laughs> if you've you, seen... Um, you did... What, uh, <laughs> What's that movie um, with um, Will Smith and... Um, oh, yeah, Gene Hackman, um, right? Enemy of the State. Of the state. Yeah, Enemy of the State. Right. I never get tired of watching that one. It's just a cool... Um, well, because he's a cranky of, old man on that one. That's great. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, it's just terrific. Yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah, we've got yeah, our I was going to say, it's either, it's either someone listening in or I'm getting a cold. That's one of the two, you know. <laughs> right. <laughs> and, you know, interesting stuff, how they've hacked into, like, this um, monitor cable. So they hack into the red line of the RGB monitor cable. And yeah. then that, once again, it's a radar-based thing. It's not like it transmits something. They, um, they you know, fire a radar at it and, and it get they get the modulator return from that. And then right. they just uh, recover the uh, dot clock and, you know, and bam, wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. They can see what's on your monitor. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's what that's what Greg was talking about, too, with the, that, the sensors that are the, the parking street sensors. Those things are pretty cool. Um, right. The, I forget, they're some kind of silly name. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I, I but don't, but I don't that, that monitor cable is only 30 bucks. Yeah, I mean, what's I'd like to it, buy I mean, one, please. I mean, Oh, okay. No, well, no, it's not much. It's that. a couple of resonators and coils and, you know, built yeah. in it. But, like, somebody's time, somebody's hand built these things, right? Somebody at the NSA That's is true. chopping open these VGA monitor cables and hand building these. Right. Yeah, but they're not probably selling it with too much overhead, right? I mean, they're just... Oh, no, no. That's <laughs> just a parts, you know. Mm. It's a nominal internal cost, you know. It's yeah, just a, the uh, yeah. the guy that's doing that, he's, he's already paid for, so... <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> because they just bought, a you know, a, some cable from Amazon.com and they Yeah, why wouldn't it, you? you? Know? So, they, so they're just passing on the Amazon cost, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's terrific. Yeah, it's, it's cool tech. I mean, it's... Uh, I don't know. Some people got. I, I I think some people got upset about this stuff, but it's like you know, if you take all the other crap out, you know, all the political crap out of it, it's just like it's mm. just it's toys, right? It's spy game yeah, stuff. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, so, and there's nothing terribly surprising in there. In fact, I I'm you know, what would not... you be surprised by these days? Though, I mean, that's the thing. Like, I think about like, okay, well, so much stuff's online these days. Why wouldn't they just grab mm. packets when it gets on the network? You know, like. Oh yeah, know. but no, there's some things that. You know, like if you if your PC isn't hooked up to the internet because you're a drug dealer in some drug house or something, you know, and you're using your using your PC to you know your spreadsheet to you mean, launder all your drug money and everything. I was going to say, know? you mean something in like Colorado or what? Right. <laughs> you, you mean them boys at Spark Fund? <laughs> <laughs> It's so, legal so now, Dave. To, it's legal. Right. Okay. <laughs> so you've got to do it the old-fashioned way. You know, you have to, you know, get somebody in so, there yeah. on the inside. Oh, I'm here to repair your computer. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And, uh, right. <laughs> you know, the only thing that impresses me with this kind of stuff these days is, like, is like is like power type stuff. You know, like, like low power is interesting, right? You know, you having to use a, hmm. a radar type of setup where you're actually pinging something and modulating it back, that kind of thing. Mm. That's interesting uh, because it's, you know, it is low power on the actual device. But then, like, other things that are, like, super efficient or have really crazy schemes, I mean, there's just no way around, like, if you have an RF device, there's no way around mm. the amount of power you need for transmitting, right? You know, to get, oh, yeah. Yeah. just to get distance, you need a certain amount of power. So things that are, that would be something that would surprise me is, like, oh, well, this this could transmit, like, you know, 20 miles on a coin cell, right? It's like, okay, yep. okay sure, you know. <laughs> yeah. That's why they're doing the radar modulation thing because they right. can pump, you know, heavy-duty radar at you and, of course, you're sitting there and you've got no idea that you're being, you know, pumped with a wad of radar or something, you know, and uh, and then it modulates back. Whereas if you mm-hmm. had, as you said, you know, a little tiny transmitter in there, it has to run off a battery because, you know, some poor bastard had to go sneak in there and install it, you know, so it's got to <laughs> yeah. run for, a, right. you know, a certain period of time. And- <laughs> Can you imagine in a spy movie? Okay, so they walk in, they install the little bug, <laughs> and then it's running to like a, one of those big 12-volt AC, AC to D. You see wall warts. <laughs> wall warts sitting on that. Yeah. <laughs> just you see the little cord traveling over, getting thinner and thinner and thinner <laughs> as it disappears into the wall. Exactly. And, the, and the bugs hidden in the wall, but they just use the plug pack on the. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, <laughs> it's like something out of like uh, like a Leslie Nielsen movie or something, you know, like Naked Gun. <laughs> right, <laughs> Naked Gun. Yeah. Oh man. Ah. 
So this is why, you know, you hear about like years ago we heard about, you know, the... Oh, it wasn't that long ago, actually. Like, uh, you know, the the uh, bugs are permanently installed in the walls of embassies, and you know, so they yeah, put them in there right, when right. things were constructed. They're obviously, you know, not going to be powered devices. They're going to be passive devices, passive modulation devices, like uh, these ones we've been talking about. That you know, you hit they they only power up once you hit them with radar, and then they modulate the, you know, audio back to you, so you can hear what's going on. And you know, somebody sitting in that uh, black van with the you know the uh, <laughs> yeah tony's flowers plates you know down there. yeah exactly <laughs> yeah <laughs> with the uh transparent site with the fiberglass sides on it so that they can <laughs> yep. get yep. the radar through the side walls of the van and they're sitting you know a few streets away just pointing the radar dish at you and yeah oh, ah yeah, that's good is stuff yeah. i almost i i Sort of consider going for a job at um, ASIO once, which is our Australian version of the NSA. That's the Australian spy agency. They actually, you know, they advertise. This was pre the internet, right? So there were no yeah, job ads right. on the internet. You know, this was when they'd put an ad in the paper. You know, the, the weekend paper is where you'd find all your jobs. <laughs> but and, it was you really know, small you know, and it, hidden in the back, right? Of course. <laughs> yeah. <Nah. laughs> you had to decode it. Yeah, secret code. You had to decode yeah. it first, and then that, that was your first intelligence test. And, no, uh, you know, there it was, a big, you know, quarter page ad, you know, work for the work for ASIO, you know, we require electronics hardware engineers, you know. Yeah. 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 And you yeah. know what? You but never was... would have been able to talk about it on this show. So how do we exactly. know you didn't actually do that? Hmm? Yeah, I could have. Uh, yeah. You never know. <laughs> I mean, yeah, same kind of thing here, though. I mean, like. We'll neither confirm nor deny. Right. You have to rehearse that. Uh, yeah, I mean, NSA did. I mean, they they have tons of engineers around here. It's it's kind of crazy. It's just the infra, the right. infrastructure that's needed for this kind of stuff. It's just oh yeah yeah, it's phenomenal. Levels. Of I bureaucracy. went to see a stand up comedy show once of a guy who was ex ASIO, and um, it, it <laughs> was, was great. And it was all, all his stories. <laughs> yeah, it was brilliant. You know? And then we <laughs> shot him. Ha 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 ha. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, Boy. It's a different. It's yeah, different, the, though, right? I mean, like it's it's like you think about like the, you know, I think James Bond type stuff, right? It's like not James Bond stuff. It's it's, uh, you know, it's much I more mean, boring. This is and, pretty ordinary tech, right? It's not, you know, it's not yeah. bleeding edge. You know, they haven't yeah, got some supercomputer embedded in a pen. You know, it's not <laughs> arm sevens know. and vertex twos. Yeah, and <laughs> yeah, and, oh, yeah oh. and transistor modulators. You know, I mean, yeah. it's not, you know, it's not it's not rocket science. Right. But they do have their own fab. They can actually fab their own chips. I love what they say. There's a word in one of these uh, data sheets that says, um, uh, where is it? Let me see if I can find it. Hang on, hang on. Uh, All components are commercial off the shelf and so are non attributable to the NSA. (laughs) Just in case it gets found, you know. That's not mine. That's not mine. That's that's probably why they give it that, that deliberate home. Brew look right. Oh, this is a hand etched PCB and tack soldered, you know, by someone yeah. with some plumber's iron. You yeah. know, oh, this co- couldn't possibly it's, be the NSA. They're high tech, you know. It's they the don't... IT guy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh boy, I love it. So that's yeah. in, you know, that's in several of the data sheets. So we'll have to link in some of these data sheets because they're yeah, great. There's and a then big we'll thread. be on the radar. On the yeah, EV blog a, forum, yeah, you guys are marked. Yep. If, if the EV blog forum yep. just disappears tomorrow, Dave either didn't pay his uh, his uh, posting <laughs> yeah, bill hosting. or or he was paid a visit. He, one of the two, <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> oh, I love it. So uh, anyway, how is uh, how how is the Kickstarter going? I I meant to ask you about that. It's been a while. Have you started? Uh, them yes, all it out has stuff? been a while because I've shipped all of the uh, early backers. So I did promise so like, January, and I shipped in January. So like 40 or so? How many was that? Uh, 30. 30. 30, okay. Well, yep. That's good. And so that was all yeah, uh, hand-placed? and That was all hand-built in my SMD, yeah, baked in my SMD oven and tested and, yep. Huh. And all the rest of the parts are at the assemblers. Um, but they're probably being assembled as we speak. Nice. Probably. So yeah, yeah. So they'll be back. So I promised two hundred. You know, the next level up was two hundred, and I promised those for February. And it looks like you know, sure enough, I'll get them. Well, they'll be finished assembly in by the end of January. So I'm ahead of schedule. Whoa! So, look at that. Dave doesn't good. need no manager. He is the manager. 
<laughs> in fact, I proudly tweeted. I proudly tweeted that I shipped the first units on the same day that the money came through to my bank account. The exact ah. same day. I reckon I'm probably nobody's given me another example. I reckon I'm probably the only hardware Kickstarter campaign that's ever done yeah. that. I was gonna say hard, maybe not hardware. Like if there's like an ebook that was already written or something, something oh, like that. Oh yeah, no, yeah, but I'm talking hardware, hardware. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, hardware is a different story. Yeah. See, it's a yeah. little different though. I mean, you already had this thing designed though too. I think a lot of the Kickstarter ones are like, okay, well, we're mostly designed, and now we're going into yep. design for manufacturing. Whereas yours was like, you know, this is a. I well, I was going ahead with it anyway, regardless of where, right, whether or not I right. got the Kickstarter money. You know, so right. that's why I already bought the parts up front and or some of them. You know. Yeah, it would be interesting Certainly if that enough. if that becomes a new a new model though of like, be, you know, depending on where you do it in the process, right? Because or hmm. when you really need the money, if you're you were using it mostly as like a marketing kind of it way to get the word out. It was more as a out. marketing tool, yeah. Easy but, way to you know, sh- to get like uh, you know the payments taken care of and everything like yeah, that. Yeah, marketing pre orders and and getting yeah. everything nicely into a spreadsheet and all that sort of jazz, you know. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Any uh, any surprises while you were. While you were doing your your reflow, I mean, how's that how's that process been going for you? Oh, that that worked okay. I had the odd one that um, you know didn't take. Um, it's it it's not easy to you know because you want to set your oven so that you know a minimal amount of heat possible to do the job, right? Because you don't want to yeah. cook your parts, yeah, right? right. That, that's always the fear of Especially the home Especially when maker. the board is right. uh, part of the case, right? You can't just hide it by putting it yeah, yeah. inside the entire no. enclosure. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, look, the solder mask is now a burnt green colour. You know? Although then, then it would be like a collector's edition, right? It's like, oh, who cares if uh, they yeah, signed right. it? Uh, he he burnt this one. This is, this is the most yep. rare of the rare. <laughs> <laughs> by the way, it's not very easy to sign cases. By no, the way, what's, what's, what's hard about marker. it? Oh, because it's like a tiny case and sort of you've got to sign it in free air kind of thing. It's not like you can rest your hand like you can do on paper, you know, uh, stuff. It's kind of just like awkward. <laughs> you need yeah. like an autograph so, fixture. <laughs> right, yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. Like just a, cut it out I of can, like plastic or something. And... I can actually get a factory silk screened on, you know. Oh, yeah, like scanning your signature. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but then it loses something, you know. And, yeah, it does lose something. Yeah. So, yeah, every signature is unique, folks. Not yeah. that I ever sign my name the same way twice. Anyway, yeah, why would you? So. Right, that's so boring. No. So what yeah. about uh, so push, <laughs> pushing it production then? Um, is that is that process pretty pretty solid for you by now? I mean, I guess you've been using the same well, guy for a while. Well, no, no, I'm using a new assembler who's actually a backer of the project. Really? How that, uh, yeah. how that go down? Just um, yeah, w- gave well, you a shout. He, He's like, "Hey, I build stuff." <laughs> <laughs> no, he he originally approached me at my um stand at the trade show uh two years back. And huh. said, hey, you know, he's a fan. He watches the blog. I'd love to, you know, I run an assembly house up the coast and I'd love to, you know, make your boards from now on. And um, I felt bad because I didn't get in touch with him. You know, it took me so long to finally get another batch of, you know, microcurrents done. Um, yeah. Because the, the previous ones, I just stuck with my previous assembler because everything was in place, you know, and every, everything yeah, was running that, smoothly. Yeah, that's I think that's most production, right? I mean, if you're if you it's like ain't broke, don't fix it. That that kind of mentality. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Because it's a exactly. big moving stuff in production is tough. Even even for yep. for smaller projects, yep. it it can still just be you know like there's always that tribal knowledge. Hmm. An assembler knows. Okay, well, yeah, you know this this diode it is the right footprint, but it sometimes slides in in reflow or something like that. Yep. You know, and they know yep. they know to to do an offset or something from the from the placement file. Uh huh. So, yeah, she can't beat, you know, previous experience of assembling that product. Anyway, I'm trialing the new guy, um, and we'll see how it goes. But because he's a backer of the project and he's really keen to get into the whole open source hardware thing, you know, mm-hmm. I figure he's going to do a – well, he's, he's certainly going to do his best anyway. <laughs> so <laughs> All these people start sweating, like, oh, shit, I'm in that group. <laughs> <laughs> Double check your boards. Open that first thing you do with an EEV blog product is you take it apart, right? <laughs> right. You well, should include comes... a little instruction piece or an instruction sheet that says, "Step one: Take apart." Cut. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, because you need to put the battery in, anyways, right? You gotta, you gotta I, take it well, apart to do I, that. Yeah, it comes, it comes unassembled anyway. You've got to, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you got oh, to install cool. the battery. So I figured, well, there's no point screwing the screws in because well, you just have to take them back out. 
Yeah. But. So, uh, speaking of of assembly, and speaking of uh, earlier about shows where you didn't you didn't decide to show up, uh, <laughs> <laughs> our former guest Andy Seddon, Andrew Seddon uh, of Circuit Hub. Do you remember Circuit Hub? Yes. So. I think we talked about it after the fact where so Circuit Hub was doing a thing where they had a centralized repository where you could go and like select a footprint mm-hmm. and then you could uh, download it to Dropbox and then you could just sync your library right to that kind of thing. So it would be like a marketplace yep. of footprints. Well, they finally announced their uh, – I've, I've been working with them on, on some of the beta – the alpha stuff I guess it is because they're kind of in beta now. But they just announced their beta and I'm super, 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 super excited about this. Okay, so here's how it goes. Tell us. If if you have if you have the footprints already in your system, that that's going to make things better, but it's not required. The thing that's really cool. Okay, so Eagle or Oh, no, this is their own tool, isn't it? This is their own tool. Yeah, so it's they have like a centralized tool that's like a a generic database and then it'll it'll sync to your Dropbox in whatever tool you're using. So you can use KiCad, Eagle, or Altium. Oh, right. I thought right. you had to use their PCB schematic tool. No, no, that's 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 Upverter. Upverter has oh, like sorry, all I'm online. Oh, sorry, I'm thinking, I'm thinking Upverter, right? Right, okay, right, right. Sorry. So, so Circuit right. Hub has uh, the centralized database, where it's just kind of like information about the parts, right? You know, this is the pad sizes. Here's where mm-hmm. the pads go, and then it it basically downloads it to whatever the um, the actual CAD program wants to see. You know, the specific CAD format. But like I said, you don't actually need to use those footprints anymore, although it will help you later. So what you can do now, so you have. KiCad, Eagle, or Altium. Uh, you right. tr- you put it into your project folder on on Dropbox. Into their there's like a specific folder for them, and then you go to their website and you click click sync, and it pulls all the files that it needs from your from your folder. It ignores all the stuff that it doesn't need. So in KiCad at least, right, it'll pull all of your specific sch- schematic sheets. It'll pull um, it'll pull your your libraries, your library files, right. and then it'll pull the the actual layout, the KiCad PCB file, which is the layout file, all of that stuff, it'll generate Gerber's online, which is uh, other tools do that. But then it sucks in all of the data, it syncs it up to Octopart, it lets you select which parts you do or don't want populated, and or if you want them to be like placed off to the side in like a kit, and then mm. you can basically have a little slider bar saying I want one, or I want a yeah. hundred, and then it'll send it off for fabrication. It's, it's killer. It's almost un- well. It's almost unbelievable. It's almost like, unbelievable. Yeah, like and it's- as in as in it can't possibly work for <laughs> a complicated project. Like I'm thinking, well, okay, it's going to work for a little Arduino shield, you know, LED yeah, flasher with well, LM three two fours and right. You know. And and that is that's going to be the ultimate test. Like I said, it's still in beta, but so I've done it for. Uh, for the getting to Blinky, the the the, the right. KiCad tutorial I did, so I did it for that. That's super simple, right? Two layer board. It's of like course. May, maybe yeah. twelve components. Super simple. But we were just doing that as, as like testing stuff for for Alpha. Um, mm-hmm. And now I'm actually pushing what my early version of of the the contextual electronics project. I'm pushing that up there now too, and uh, it's gotten faster and it's pulling all the data in and it does like it gives it like pulls in spares when it needs spares and everything. And I'm right. telling you, man. If this is like the dream, right? Because yeah, but you've you've got to set it up, right? You've got to tell it this part is this octo is this digi key part number. No. Right? So well, here's the thing. So so this is where it came back to like using their part library, right? If you're using their oh, part right. library to so start with, you've got with, to use their part library. Right. No, you don't. You don't. But I'm saying if you do use their part library to start with, then it's already synced. Yep. It has like a circuit hub number, of course, and that's yep. synced out to a specific uh, manufacturer part number, but. Right. On my stuff, I just put in the manufacturer part number, and then it it will it'll pull in the manufacturer part number, and then eventually, as they get more and more data, it's going to suggest alternates, and then it's going to also try and bundle right. orders, and it's going to try and reduce costs for so like so the the really the Got really it. really really killer thing is like so say you're using LM three two four and I'm using LM three two four, someone else is using just a generic or a different generic op amp, right? But because you and hmm. I are ordering it and we're building boards with it. Uh, you know, Jeff Kaiser is using something else, right? And he, right. it basically goes to him then and says, hey, these other orders are using the LM324. Why don't you guys all, or if you yeah, use this, then you'll get this right. better, you'll get this better low Got quantity it. price. And that's yep. going to be super killer. Um, 
So I, I am I am over the moon and, about and, this and thing. And they I mean, <laughs> supply a fully assembled board. Yeah. So basically, you you can check they all your Gerbers. They will order your PCB. Uh huh. And they will they will get your PCB manufactured, and they'll ship it off to the yep. assembly, buy all the parts, yep. and ship you a fully assembled board. Yep. Wow. Who's yeah. doing this? I mean, because like, if you order one board, like they're they're not going <laughs> to or ten boards, they're not going to bother doing a pick and place machine, right? Somebody's hand hand assembling these. Ah, so that's the other thing they're talking about. So, so now imagine now there's a standard set of uh, <laughs> I might have to double check it with how much I'm allowed to say about this stuff, but like imagine like now you and I and eight other people are building not the same boards but similar boards well then you start getting other mm-hmm. bundling effects like you already have reels preloaded into a machine right so you think about right. a lot got of it, got it. low quantity projects yep. that are using an at mega 328 right not every project yep. has it but if you have these reels that are already loaded and you just put them snap them on of the course. machine your yep. your yep. um your setup costs drop yep. you can actually start bundling panel like they can start bundling panels then too like like ash park does mm-hmm. i mean like a lot of this is still in the works but but like right. it's early days, and I think it's it's. Uh, It'd be awesome if you could yeah, it's, live it's, see what parts are f- already mounted in the machine. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Right. If you had that uh, that knowledge uh, of yeah. of like yep. You ever seen those bars that do that now? Uh, they do it like a like a marketplace. So so you go to I know you don't you don't drink beer, but no. like so you, you go to a bar and it's like if you and ten of your friends all order the same beer because you get volume discounts then basically and they oh, have this right. like leaderboard okay. and so it's it's like a stock market almost where like if a bunch of people are drinking the beer then it like I think it goes down in price and and so it's Got like it. surge pricing on beer effectively or whatever the opposite of surge pricing is. Um, Crowd but it'd be like the same beer. kind of thing, right? It, yeah. Yeah, it's like if she, oh well, this you know this next month maybe uh, you know a certain part's going to be more f- more popular than another, right? Everybody's using CC twenty five forty ones now that TI Bluetooth chip, right? So maybe you right. get a discount on that. Um, again, that's that's Dave and I prospecting there, but but the main thing mm-hmm. that I'm excited about is like like how much da- how much time did you spend in a bomb for your yeah, for your I microcurrent? Know. Yeah, I mean, tons. Like, yeah. That's but, the crappy part about... But I have to, because almost every part on there is unique, right? Nobody, you know, I can guarantee you nobody's ever used it in any open source hardware project, right? No, yeah, that's it's, true. It, but this know, isn't every just part open source is, hardware is custom, stuff. you know, brand new, so... Hmm. Yeah, but no, anyway, I know that, but I mean, like... interesting. If they support Altium, then that's interesting. I can... Yeah, exactly. I can do that. I mean, yeah. so, yeah, the, the big three. And I think, so I talked to Andy the other day, he said... He said Eagle is is uh, the smoothest process right now. I've used KiCad; it's, right. it's working for KiCad. Uh, I I there I think Altium is pretty well built in for this kind of stuff too. So I'm, I'm sure that's working too. Um, but yeah, it might right. be worth you know uploading the um, the the board, mm. the uh, yeah microcurrent, microcurrent board, and just see, seeing how it is. So mm. it's and it's a cool little interface too, you know, just kind of going through and clicking because you know it's going to pull in all your stuff, right? The only thing that I don't, the only thing that I kind of complain about with it is like it'll pull in like my my silk screen because that's a footprint in KiCad, right? So it'll oh, pull in right. a, a okay. custom silk screen that I make. So you just have to go in and say, okay, that's that's not a part, you know, that's a that's either a, yeah. a you know, a, yep, a physical component versus a whatever <laughs> an electrical component. So <laughs> got it. <sighs> yeah, so I get really excited talking about it. All right. Uh, <laughs> right. But is it, yeah. alter- you know, it, it's good for those small-scale projects, but when I'm, say, manufacturing 2,000 microcurrents, you know, it's it's always, you know, almost certainly going to be better to do it myself, to deal directly with the fab house, buy the you, parts directly, you know. Yeah, yeah. Well, it it's depends, though, right? I mean, so you think about it'll probably be cheaper, but... It, I think it'll end up coming down to like, if it's so, so if you had a company with you, right? So say you had, you know, five or six people and you're all, you know, able to handle this stuff, deal with, deal with a lot of the, the, uh, the buying and all that other stuff. It's like, yeah, okay. Then mm-hmm. you're, you're going to find some efficiencies there, I think. But right. I think the case there is going to be, okay, you just, you, you made a, a prototype, you made 10 of a prototype and you uploaded it through here. And then you put it on Kickstarter and you sold two thousand, mm. right? 
Yep. That yep. that's the real case where it's it's like okay that's exactly yep that's where it probably makes sense you know scalable as a, as mm-hmm. a solopreneur kind of person yep. to use a terrible term. yeah of course <laughs> of course yeah like oh crap my Kickstarter went gangbusters and now I've got to make two thousand how yeah. do I do it well I just push a button you know like right right yep. yeah and that's that's the goal I mean yeah and you're gonna pay for that kind of thing right so yeah, yeah, I don't yeah, know how much yeah. and. Uh, uh, but so it, it'll be some percentage boards, of it. That, where are their boards made and assembled? I or don't they do tell not you know that, that super secret. They they told me, but I don't know if that's actually final or uh, I'm allowed right. to say. So okay, but it's it was reputable, you know, board house and uh, PCB manufacturer. Yep. So I, I was not concerned at all if that helps. <laughs> In China or US? Uh, US right now. Oh, okay, cool. So, yeah. Yeah. No Australia branch yet, I don't think. Uh, <laughs> ah, well. But, yeah. Not to so, worry. It's, so, the only thing I would say is uh, if people are interested, just it's a beta still. So, uh, you know, if they get a thousand people that do it at one time, it might be kind of rough. But, <laughs> right. It might break. And Andy said I could tell people. So, uh, <laughs> I told him, I'm like, I don't know, man. I'm pretty excited about this. I think a lot of people will be. But, uh, Oh, goodness. Yeah. Hmm. We'll see if he's right. crying tomorrow. Uh, <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, so, what else is new? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. We've just rat- rattled on for half an hour about bloody... Circuit Yeah, up. so uh, well, I saw another uh, uh, Kickstarter on, on at least on our, our list that I was surprised to see show up in your... Your uh, your video oh, there too. Right, I'm I'm the first backer. Yes. How, so I how did that work? At... Did they start shipping <laughs> it before it's done? They did. Yes, mine is a uh, beta unit. They approached me and they said, "Hey, you know, we're we're some cool guys. We're doing this cool little uh, robot arm. Would you like one?" And I went, oh, "You know, I don't know. I thought, uh, you know, I don't know. It's a bit of a toy." You know, and they said, "Oh, you know, look, we'll, we'll we'll ship. You know, you can be the first backer, and we'll you know sell it to you at cost, and you know, and uh, okay, you know, seems like a cool sort of thing." And yeah, they they shipped me the first unit. So huh. I so I'm not actually a backer. Well, I'm I'm not I'm not actually in the system as a backer, but you know, I actually right. bought okay. It, that's that's and what they makes shipped more it sense. to me early. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's yep. that's that's a good that's a good way to do it. Uh, yeah. Is this your first robot? I was going to ask you about that because I mean that's yeah, I yeah, think that's is, that's a yeah. big milestone for people, you know, big first robot. Yes, <laughs> this is this is my first robot. Yeah, it's a four-axis robotic um, arm. You know, it's an Arduino-based thing, and I haven't actually physically hooked it up to the PC yet. I haven't downloaded the software and actually made it do something useful yet. Um, yeah, you know, and you know, it's it's essentially pretty much a toy. I mean, you probably can find some sort of niche, uh, you know industrial application for it i'm sure you know if you you were creative enough somebody asked on the ev blog forum actually you know what use is it what can you use it for and the first thing that popped into my mind oh you could um do life testing of uh switches or life testing oh that's a good one connectors or something like that you know so you can have it here with a you know you put an artificial finger on the end of it and you can get the thing to poke you switch at all different <laughs> angles, you know, like just sit there twenty four seven, just poke, 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 and see how long it lasts. Or like annoy you know? someone, or, right? You could just you could just have it <laughs> right, poke someone yeah. in the shoulder all day long. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and tap um, someone on the shoulder. <laughs> you know, yeah. So I, you know, I don't know what I'm going to do. With it. It's not like you know, it's not good enough to do say you know component pick and place and have your own like little. You right. know, people have talked. Yeah, you about would do that. that. Oh, the four axis use- anyways. No, well, right, well you I mean, could. In theory, you could do it. Um, but, you know, it's just not precise enough. It isn't repeatable enough, I don't think. I'm, I'm, you know, I can almost guarantee it just by looking at it. I know that, you know, it's not going to be repeatable, repeatable enough for anything but, you know, really massive components kind of thing. Yeah. So, but, you know, it's there. It's got a little suction cup and it can, you know, under software control, it can suck up parts and, you know, move things around. So, I was thinking like Lego possible. sorter. That's what I was thinking of as like a potential application. <laughs> right. Well, then you'd have to, you know, have visual ID and, you know, you'd have to have a camera and, you know, all that yeah, sort of jazz. That's true. Then you'd have to do, yep. 
But no, it's certainly possible. You use it as a base for more complicated projects. I guess that's the idea of it. You know, in itself, it's just, you know, a bit of a toy. But if you, you know, yeah, you might want to attach a, a vision camera to it and do real-time vision processing, and then it can identify, you know, uh, objects and stuff like that. So, yeah. Yep. This isn't your first robot. I was just thinking about that. That's not your first robot. You had a MakerBot. I mean, Is like it? that's technically oh, a robot. Oh, right. Okay. Right. Okay. Fair I enough. I mean, I think, I don't know, what, what makes a robot? I think like, you know, stepper motors. <laughs> Anything with stepper motors yeah. that moves, yeah. yeah, I guess. Although and this you, thing doesn't have stepper motors. That's a disadvantage of it. It's got uh, DC servos. Yeah. So, I, saw, I saw you mention that mm. in the video too. And it, so it doesn't have any kind of feedback mechanism for like... No. No, it's just a... No. So what does it do? Just well, by timing? I, pretty it sure just it like doesn't. drives a, mo- a servo by timing, then, or? I guess so. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, I assume so. Anyway, I'm not sure of the exact details yet. I haven't actually looked into it, so we'll see. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, it's a fun little thing. I'm sure uh, Sagan will love it. You know, I'll hook it up to the PC and he'll oh, move yeah. the mouse around and watch the <laughs> arm move, and you know, yeah. he, he he loves the MakerBot. Yeah, you know, he loves being. You know, he he knows how to go through the menu on the MakerBot. You know, insert the SD card and call really? up the menu, and he can. Yeah, he can start oh, prints on his own. Oh, jeez, yeah. I know. That's crazy. <laughs> it's scary. Yeah. Oh, get that kid a soldering iron, man. Take yeah, right. Free labor. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Board assembly house. I uh, know it's in house now. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Paid in apple juice. We, we didn't um, finish talking about my microcurrent um, things. Actually, there's testing to be oh, yeah? done. Oh, what's as going well. on with that? You know, well, you know how I designed in like a card edge connector on the side of the panel. Yeah. Right to you know test ten boards at once kind of thing. And I, you know, I, th- I had the idea that I might, you know, decide to do like an automated jig that's sort of plugged up and, you know, um, and actually automatically measured the output and had a bunch of LEDs and you know pass fail and all that sort of jazz. And, and in the end, I decided <laughs> no, it's probably not. It's probably not worth the effort. You know, I don't really right. have the volume to warrant, you know, spending a couple of weeks designing that and you know, dicking around and getting it troubleshooting, getting it right and perfect. It's right. You know, yeah. Because so if you're shipping I'm, that up north too, then you'd have to either go up there or uh, have troubleshooting guides and everything else, right? Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, well, I'm probably like I'm going to have a testing system. I'll probably get them to test like the uh, thousand units. I'll I'll test the two hundred that are going to come back, you know, next week or something. Oh, okay, um, okay. But you know, then I've got a thousand, so I'm probably not going to test a thousand myself, right? But I so I'm going to end up using the card edge connector just to apply power to all the boards, and then I'm just going to have some dedicated. You know, because it's got three different ranges, so I'm probably going to make just three different little battery-powered boxes, just one-offs hand-built, that Mm -hmm. sort of just, you know, plug in, and you flick the switch, and it gives you a pass-fail. You know, and then you go, and then you do that step from, you know, board one, board two, board three, and it takes, you know, two seconds for each one or something. Yeah, right. Yeah. So I figured that was probably the best trade-off in terms of, you know, amount of effort and time expended to design a test system and versus you know uh, payback in well terms and of labor saved i mean thinking about your design too that's it, an interesting you know a design question too because like a design for test design for manufacturing you're paying more yep. for those those nice resistors in there and that's really oh, yeah. I mean, it's, in terms of sense elements there's 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 a, a diminishing number of things that can go wrong. Like if if the if it powers oh, yeah. on and you get any semblance of readings, uh, you know. Yep. Okay. That, I'm, that's, I'm pretty much guaranteed. It's, yeah, yeah, that's eighty percent of your test right there. Because otherwise, yep. it means you got bad bad resistors out of tolerance, which is a huge problem, or you have a. Uh, uh, op amp that has bad input bias current which is means that's out of spec too then right exactly and, yeah. and it's like if, at yeah. that point you got so many problems that <laughs> you don't need to care about uh, test fixture yeah. <laughs> exactly exactly yeah. so it's you know it's, i could do that right that's another thing that people uh don't you know you can just not even test the product or you can do some basic thing oh yeah the yeah, power the comes power on, on and yeah. You know, yeah, power on or something like that. And you can ship that. And then you can go, well, I'm not going to bother testing because I know my phone, you know, I can do just do sample testing, like one in every hundred I can test just to make sure that they haven't put the wrong parts on the real, yeah, you know, on right. the machine or something like that, right? And then you, you just wear the cost of, of any returned units, you know, that, that are faulty. 
Right, um, and, and you hope, true, that you hope for be goodwill. Cheaper. <laughs> you yeah, hope for goodwill exactly. from your customers, right? <laughs> right. Yeah, well, and we'll that s- could be cheaper than fully testing each one. Definitely. You know? Yeah, I think that's an yeah. increasing, uh, uh, increasingly large amount of manufacturing these days, just because of the oh, yeah. the drop in yeah. cost of electronics in the first place, right? I mean, it's just why wouldn't you just? It's, I not, mean, it's not worth testing them, right? Yeah. I mean, you work over time to try and reduce your to up your yield, right, and lower your waste, mm-hmm. but. But yeah, it's the amount of time it takes for a technician to open the case and take it out and troubleshoot it. And they only have, you know, there's always, when you have a technician like that, they usually only have half an hour or an hour to figure it out. If, if they don't get it, then it's trash anyways. And so yeah. it's like, if you don't have enough margin priced into your product, then you can't, you, you literally cannot have a technician fix it. Unless it's yep. like something super rare and then you should have margin priced in anyways. So yeah. Exactly. Yeah, and it's then. tough. But um, in the case of the microcurrent, for example, it's a precision instrument, and actually, technically, it should not meet its spec. Right on paper, any manufactured unit may not meet its spec. You know, because you I, mean, you know, the, because, because of uh, stack ups or what? I, well, yeah, yeah, the actual tolerance stack up. I test or I, I, I claim a tighter spec than what is. Theoretically, oh. the worst case, right? Right. So you're you're yes. going by typical versus max on. on I'm your going components. by typical versus max. Oh, exactly. that's a dangerous so game have... to play, man. That's. A, I that's know a... it's a dangerous <laughs> game to play. Yeah. But, oh, it know. looks fine today. Yeah. Let, yeah, me tell, yeah exactly. let me tell you about that when you go back to the manufacturing uh-huh. and you're like you're like. Uh-huh. Uh, so I I heard you had really low really low uh, offset voltage on this op amp uh, typically, and they're like, "Yep, we do typically." That one doesn't. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. See you later. <laughs> yeah. And and that's worked um, okay for me in the past, and I think it'll work okay again. But once again, say these 30 hand-assembled units, right? Not yeah. very controlled assembly because it's in my, you know, dodgy do-it-yourself <laughs> yeah. thermal baking oven, right? right and right. they all met the tight spec that I put in there. Well, which, you know, which some you of to- them just made it. Yeah, you know, what you have to claim like there, Dave, is is right. they're pre-aged, right? You're you're just getting them through the bathtub yes. curve and, exactly. and uh, yes, a radius <laughs> equation, yada yada yada. Uh. Yep. <laughs> so so it's just interesting because a lot of products don't, you know, that you know doesn't matter a rat's ass. Yeah. You know, but uh, for yeah, precision things a different. like like this, it's yeah. It, make, yeah, it, it makes a different it makes ball a game. difference. Yep. So you are so, gonna, you are going to do it though. You're going to have some semblance of testing for oh hmm. there will be a automated but there will be a pass fail test yes oh okay yes that actually well it's you know it's not like over the full range it's like a spot value right you know it's a verify on each it's a it's, very it's, yeah it's a verify a that you know <laughs> yeah yeah exactly that it meets the spec you know yeah and calibrations are are terrible uh yep. <laughs> i mean they're nice mm-hmm. they help you they help you uh optimize for nonlinearities and all that other stuff and in, in precision things but Oh, God, that that's just a headache waiting to happen. <laughs> no, I know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> shake, so, shake your calibration technician's hand the next time you see him because yeah. he or she uh, has a tough life. Uh, <laughs> yep. Yeah. And as I've shown in a previous video, and we've talked about a long time ago, um, yeah, I got shipped a bad batch of resistors once. They were 1% yeah. tolerance instead of 0.1%. You know, and I was testing these things, and I was wondering why I was getting, you know, a fifty percent failure rate. You know, and yeah, five yeah, percent. You might you might just write the... it off, and uh, 50% oh, yeah, five percent you, you will write notice. It off. Yep, right. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So yeah, I expect there to be you know several failed units out of this, and if there are, well, you know, I'll get them back, and I can either hand replace the resistors, or I can sell them as a as a looser spec. You know, yeah. thing. Right. Which is how chip companies do it, so why not, right? Yeah, exactly. Uh, this one <laughs> has right. been uh, audience binned. <laughs> <laughs> right. uh, Kickstarter tested. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so, what you should anyway, do. Anyway, um, I forgot to tell. I, I'm going to write a blog post on this, but you know how I was, you know, I'm, I'm trialing Kickstarter um, yes. because I wanted to see how it worked, right? And right. I'd heard all these horror stories about the about the uh, survey, in quote mm, marks, yes, that you yes. have to send out to get people's right. I, and there's all these third-party companies that have sprung up, right? And, of course, they all, they all spammed me, right, multiple times when I was had my Kickstarter campaign running. Oh, for, you know, 1% or 2%, a lousy 1% or 2% of your 
Kickstarter, you know, money, we will handle all of your surveys for you and take away all the headaches and all the dramas because Kickstarter is shit, you know. Yeah. And um, and I thought, oh god, what am I, you know? And I've had other people who've run Kickstarters before, and they've said, oh yeah, this survey system's a nightmare, and like, and but I was surprised. It's good. Yeah. All I right. liked it, apart from the fact that you can only run it once, right? Yeah. right. So if you goof it up and or somebody's sent you the wrong address, they can't just update it, and then you can download the latest database. It doesn't work like that. You only, right. It's a one-off. But that's the only bad thing about it. Apart from that, I was really impressed. It worked well. I well, could download good. all my data in, in a totally usable and what I expected Excel, um, you know, CSV, CSV yeah. format, um, you know, file, load into my spreadsheet. It's all there. I print out my labels. Everything's sweet. I like it. And so I can even download that multiple times in different and sort it in different ones on like who has already shipped and I can categorize and, and the different perk levels, different databases. Huh. It actually works well. It's about so, the only thing of Kickstarter that I've been impressed about. I was going to say, <laughs> so you think this, uh, this Kickstarter thing, it has legs, huh? <laughs> no, no, no. I'd rather gonna, use not... possible. No, Kickstarter is, no. As I said, it's the only, it's the only saving grace for Kickstarter is oh, the okay. fact that All right. so I got, the survey got system actually vote. works well. Right, okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. And well, they cool. do pay on time. They promised to pay exactly two weeks after, and sure enough, they did. Hmm. Precisely two weeks after, the money turned up in my account. So, minus eight point three percent. Right. Know. Well, you're not going to get all of it. Yeah. yeah. No. Government's right. coming next, man. Coming to get yeah, your money. Yeah, that's right. Government. 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 <laughs> <laughs> uh, so oh, you know what you should do next time that you. Uh, What's that? In, instead of this this crazy little precision device, you should build a two hundred dollar thermostat. <laughs> I should, because then I can get bought out by Google for a ridiculous <laughs> $3.2 billion. $3. billion. Yes, that's right. $3.2 Can I actually billion. swear? Am I allowed to swear on this blog? Uh, uh, this, uh, you can, radio show? but uh, then I got to. I, I gotta... usually don't like to drop the F bomb, but yeah, what the F? Okay, I won't <laughs> say it, but like, okay, right, this is. Oh, surely people have already seen this. By of course, now. yeah. This, this is this is but, two weeks ago now, but yeah. we we but have to rant on a, a little company. bit, right? Of course, right. It's a company that Nest. They did. Were, were they a Kickstarter or no? They were no, sort of no, a, no, no, no. This, no, this they, is they, like they the, were a startup though. Like they were a startup. They were only like three sort of. years old. They were started in 2010. Yeah, they got bought. Anyway, they got what bought they've in got is just a networked, smart, cloudy, wanky thermostat for your home, <laughs> right? Plus, they've got a wanky, networked, cloudy, talks to you and, you know, makes your coffee smoke alarm. Yes. This is what they got. So they've got a thermostat and a smoke alarm. That's all they got. And they got bought out for $3.2 billion. Well, it's yeah. So, we, yeah, this, this there was a lot of, a lot of uh, conversation about this kind of thing. It's not just, like, yeah, we say it like that, of course, right? It's like, okay, I can buy uh, a, yeah. a smoke detector for five bucks and a thermostat for ten. But it's not like they were the same, the exact same thing, you know? No, they're, they're not the same thing, but there's other companies doing network thermostats. Google could have done it themselves. In fact, Google had their own department that did networked power monitoring and stuff like that. It oh, would yeah, have been, they did. They shut know, that down, though, didn't for, they? I thought yeah, we talked yes, about that they did shut down. it down, yeah. But the fact is, right, For th- let's say... Let's say Google threw thirty-two million bucks, right? Which is what three, three orders of magnitude less than what they paid for Nest. Is it three per three twenty thirty-two? Yeah, yeah, yeah no, yeah. two two orders of magnitude. Two, two orders. Yep, yeah. <laughs> two orders of magnitude less than what they paid for Nest, right? And thirty-two million bucks would have bought you a bunch of talented hardware engineers, and they would have developed encoders and everything else, you know, cr- you know does all the cloud crap and, and embedded software engineers, and they w- they could have developed this product, right? Yeah, so, so if it's you the get, product so they three, wanted, they could have... So yeah, for three years. So if you uh, estimate uh, 200 grand an engineer, which is probably a little low in the Bay Area, so say, f- say 250 an engineer. A little low? Yeah, really? Dude. Yeah, dude. Well, really? again, assuming no, so they get paid about so Bay Area pays from anywhere like from a hundred to 
140, depending on experience. I guess 80 oh, like up to 140. A, a 100 to maybe 150 is what I was, I was expecting. Yeah, but, but you when know? you do calculation for that kind of stuff, you also have to roll in like like benefits are included in the states. You have to, you know, usually you have to pay for benefits and then overhead. Usually you have to charge an overhead too. So the estimate I've always heard is 200,000 200, per engineer 250 if they're high, oh if they're right that, that's more. the company cost right that's not what right, they're paying right, right, right. the engineer if someone gives you a, a, a million right. dollars you either get four yep. or five engineers for a year yeah right? of course and so say yep. let, let's yep. give them the benefit of the doubt right these guys are paid really well so uh-huh. you get four engineers for a year so that's 32 yep. million times four engineers a year four. so that's 128 128 engineers a year let's let let's have that divided by let's three. say they got 50 engineers right that's plenty to do a product to do products like Prob- this, right? 50 engineers probably too is many a pretty if it's hardware group. yeah, right? yeah I mean, exactly. that's a lot for hardware right. <laughs> yeah. well and for the One software engineer. side of things you only need a couple of talented you know this is not yeah. freaking designing a new operating system right this is you know this is just yeah, doing a right. cloud well, connected and- internet device you know, it's not. I mean, I think the company wasn't. It was about fifty people, I think. So, and then you right. got to figure prototype costs, all that. You know, like fast turn prototypes, yeah, stuff yeah. like that. So, yeah, you could definitely do this in three years and fifty billion dollars, fifty million dollars, right? I mean, like you could build yeah, a a good group of people. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, their return easily. on investment right. is very high. <laughs> they they made a lot of a lot of money, and you know, people talk about See, buying. They're buying like talent, or they were buying the you know the the brand name, all that other crap. It's like. They were blowing no, money. That's <laughs> no, they they were like because a lot of the talk was that they were buying the guy who founded it because this guy was the guy who originally designed the iPod. It's yeah. like whoopty freaking do! I'm spinning my finger around in the air here, right? <laughs> whoopty freaking do! Yeah, right. He designed it. Whoopty do! Like, right. uh, and uh, I they they didn't uh, Apple didn't invent the wire the portable audio device you know right uh, the zen remember that thing that thing was like a oh, there was a hard tons drive of wrapped them in like that. Uh, spongy right. plastic it's like <laughs> three no, and a half inch it's, hard it's ridiculous right right so yeah okay like like for me right 32 million dollars would have been hey they did really well right if they were bought out for 32 million bucks i'd, I'd say yeah they did really well yeah. Right, three hundred and twenty million would have been crazy, right? That even that figure would have raised eyebrows and went, "Holy shit!" You know, yeah. that's a lot of money. Three point two billion. This is like the second biggest acquisition Google have ever done, right? And Google have acquired a lot of companies. There's a wiki page with the companies Google's acquired, right? There's hundreds oh, yeah. of them. Okay, I'll have and to this look that is up. The, this apart from YouTube, I think. Right, right. Which no, was not, actually no. They no, they cheaper. paid less for YouTube. Yeah, it was cheaper. It was only like a billion dollars. Right, right. So Google put that in perspective. They paid a billion dollars for YouTube, right? You know, it owns the video market, right? And, and yet they pay three point two billion for fifty hardware engineers with a thermostat and a freaking smoke alarm. Yeah, yeah. It's that's. I, I, so I just, no, hang on. I'm going to bang my head on the desk. Hang on. Okay, you do that. I'm looking up numbers. So I had calculated, <laughs> I had calculated the numbers. Oh, that hurts. Because, okay, so say let's, I, so, okay, if, if we ignore, if we ignore the costs of, you know, Goodwill, which is like, you know, brand name and the cost okay, of this it's dude. it's worth a bit. That, that's why I was saying 32 million bucks. Right, no, well, I know, but, but even past value, that then, right? right? So you have, you have to, so when companies buy, get bought, like they're also buying future potential right they're buying of course uh, uh you know it's Make not like they're selling style right yeah they're not selling what they're selling today they're not you know maker bot selling what twenty two thousand printers by the time they get bought you know nest, nest has sold a lot but they haven't sold all that they're going to no. sell so, exactly what did, what did i do I, I i did the calculation at one point here uh and and it was oh here we go so a 60 percent margin on a 200 dollar product right right uh, that requires 250 million products sold at $200 a piece to equal 3.2 yep. billion. Where that, and that's what that yep. means that they're effectively buying. You know, if, if yep. anyone's a Warren Buffett fan, you know, you're buying future value, right? That's what it is. Right. And it's like, that means that over their lifetime that they have to sell 250 million products at that. That means that your grandma has to buy, you know, you have to have that many people <laughs> paying that much for a friggin' smoke alarm. And it's like... I know. I, I, I it's don't, not going to happen. So. It's I a niche so. product. Yeah. No, it's bullshit. It's a niche product. Just like all these fancy network connected light bulbs, which are all the bloody rage, right? It's yeah. a niche product. Always will be. Right. Right? Because most people don't give a shit. They just want to turn it off and on. 
Same yeah. with their smoke alarm. They don't want it to talk to you. <laughs> you know, they right. they just wanted to go beep when the bloody when your house is on fire, right? And and hopefully not when it's, it's when you're it's sleeping, ridiculous. right? <laughs> that would be the ultimate thing. But uh, but I think people that's are the idea like, when you're sleeping. Well, I mean, like because if your house is on fire test. when you're not asleep, right, you're pretty yeah, much yeah, going to know. <laughs> what is that big orange Bernie thing over there? <laughs> Why is my son running down the hallway screaming fire? Right. You know, I, Something's wrong here. Yeah. <laughs> well, so what this really means is that Google probably thinks that, say, they don't sell 250 million products in the future. They sell no, no. 50 million over the no. course of no, how no, long no, this dude. exists. That mean, no, that means Google that... Google don't care. They don't care. <laughs> They're not buying this company to sell products. There's something else going on. Well, Maybe. yeah, and that's what no. I was getting at, though, is that Google exactly. doesn't value people at, you know, so a 60% margin on a $200 product would be, yep. would it be what, like 140 bucks? No, that's not right. <laughs> no, that's, yeah, yeah, no, no. I've one, got it all figured out. <laughs> okay. This is one huge, big corporate money laundering scheme, and we're not in on it. I've thought that before, actually. It's got to be. It has got to be. There is no sensible... I knocked the microphone. I'm so angry. There is no sensible reason why you would pay even $320 million for a company like this, let alone $3.2 billion. Right. Right? Some nasty shit is going down here, and we're not in on it, and I'm angry because I want my cut, damn it. <laughs> right. Well, you need to be a venture capitalist, Dave. You need to dump in about it's, it. I know. Well, and that's what I thought exactly. about before, too, is like, you know, you think about venture capitalists, okay, you know, they're investing, they want to get a good return, whatever, but the thing I think about is like, why, like, <laughs> okay, so <laughs> we're... This money just gets funneled from Google then to these guys who are making 100 exactly, times their initial investment. Exactly, because they're probably drinking buddies down at the local bloody watering hole in, in Silicon Valley, right? Right, That's yeah. my theory is that Google's bloody CEO or board is, is drinking buddies with, you know, somebody who, a venture capital firm who invested in this nest mob and it's just a way to shuffle money around. Yeah, and it pay does, each other off, and like it, it does. It does feel like that. Yeah, I mean, I, it does. I, I will never understand that world, and that's fine. I don't really want to. I don't want to be near VCs or anything like that. But uh, it, it's it's crazy. It's crazy. And I it's, believe why it's, <laughs> it's it's not like we don't have any. So like, yeah, we sound like conspiracy nuts right now, right? But then it's like, right? But, okay, but then look at this job thing, right? So this is another story that's yeah. on our list this week. It's uh, basically. A bunch of CEOs at, at these tech companies colluded to say, "Well, we won't hire your talent away, so we don't we don't uh, have to pay them more," which is insane, right. you know. Uh, because you know Silicon Valley starts like we talked about; it's, they they get paid a lot already just because of the you know the the area and everything like that. But right. now, basically, Apple and Google and who else like Adobe and a couple others, they're all getting sued now because these CEOs said to the recruiters, do not try and hire good talent away from the other companies because then they'll try and hire our talent away. And basically they... they And, out of, and it inflates the market. That, yeah, it would inflate the market if you kept And, if you and kept the companies end up paying more. Right. Right. Yeah, so, so the there's... companies have colluded together, or so the claim is, that they're all colluded together to lower the wages. Right, exactly. Because they said that you know, right. if, you, if you didn't... Like, if it was a true market condition, then it would be like, you know... Engineer A hmm. gets hired away from Google from from Apple for one hundred eighty thousand yep. versus one hundred fifty thousand or whatever, and so then yep. you know Apple has that extra thirty thousand dollars for for no particular reason other than they wanted that engineer, and it's like, well, okay, <laughs> it's, it's it's insane though. The Crazy. fact that these these anyway. salaries are that much in the first place is insane to me, but whatever. Have they actually got proof of this, or is it just like hearsay? Yeah. You know, no, they have like I I don't know how they were doing it, but there's uh, um, there's like e- they got emails and stuff like that. Maybe there's uh, affidavits or right. I don't know how loyal right. stuff works. But well, affidavits aren't worth the paper they're written on. Yeah, uh, what's it called? Uh, like a warrant where you can like go and see that stuff. I don't know. My wife well, watches cop yeah, shows. You, I don't watch you, cop you shows. You can get a you can get a federal <laughs> warrant and you could go in and and confiscate the paperwork. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So yeah, they have some kind of proof here, but it's it's uh it'll be interesting to see how this shapes up. I mean, like honestly, I live in Ohio. It's like, yeah, <laughs> right. ain't, ain't nobody's trying to hire me, or I would run. 
<laughs> uh, yeah. Ohio wages are not through the roof because <laughs> it's Ohio. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, if uh, if you do have these concentrated areas, it is it is the thing, you know. Like they don't want to, they don't want to get in these bidding wars over the top town because, it's, like, like a lot of a lot of people know here, right? It's it you know mm-hmm. you get called by stupid LinkedIn profiles, right? You get you right. put you put on your LinkedIn profile, okay, I, I'm a senior electrical engineer, and then. And then a recruiter will call your office, and they'll ask for your name, and no one will know it's a recruiter, and they'll patch you through. And then they yep. say, oh, I would wanted to talk to you about a new opportunity I have today. And they're doing that because <laughs> they're getting paid a $30,000 referral yeah, for if they exactly. find someone. It's it's yep. a crazy game. It's insane. Yeah. Do you still have people trying to call you or no? They finally it, wise it up. It happens occasionally. It happens occasionally. Yep. Yeah. And, and, and I haven't given them my resume since you know 1994 you know and they'll still call you know i'm still on their database and you know they type in their keywords and you know my my name pops up on the list because i you know i've worked on that thing yeah right exactly pops up in their keyword search yep yeah yeah the database is a real thing for sure is it like your old do you still have the same number though is that why they they can reach you uh they uh, my old email still ah, works right 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 my old email still works yep so yeah it's funny because yep, you know when you start get... out you exp- you know like you you throw your resume everywhere as you're like you know like young engineers are just trying to get mm. any job and then eventually you do get in the system and then it's just like i always tell i always tell young engineers who ask me about it i'm like you know you just need to get a job somewhere because then mm. you're on the radar as if you're if you're out of the zero years experience into the two to five years experience that is the sweet spot. Yep. That's where you see the most growth percentage-wise in salary, I think. And then, mm-hmm. you know, you get to 15, 20, and then they're like, whoa, 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 whoa. You probably don't want to be working here anymore, right? And then the ageism <laughs> right. kicks in and yada, yada, yada. <laughs> <laughs> there was a Dilbert cartoon. I just read it the other night, which was about this. It was oh, like yeah. uh, the, oh, yes, I'll have to get it. Okay. Anyway, we'll, 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 I won't spoil it. We'll post it in. I think it's relevant. Okay. Okay. Yep. <clears throat> yeah, it's a it's a weird it's a weird world we're living in here. I mean, it's <laughs> it's from the engineer side, it's it's good that salaries are still going up, right? I mean, obviously they're <laughs> right. they're trying to fix that out in the Bay Area, but I think in general, engineer salaries are. I don't know. I I, I have such limited perspective on this stuff that it's like it's, things seem okay for me. <laughs> <laughs> Oh goodness! Yeah. <sighs> yep. Why are we not in on this money laundering scheme? I mean, uh, I think you have to. I think uh, the rich get richer. I think that's how they say it. Yeah. Is that, is You've got right? to have money first, right? It's right. one of those chicken and egg things. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I don't. So another yeah. thing I was going to mention about the the uh, I guess we're kind of going back to Nest here. Uh, interesting thing about the how, how it actually hooks to your network though. So it, I think right. I think I was reading about this right. Um, it has an internal. It has a self-hosted Wi-Fi network that you have to connect to in order to first configure it, which is right. kind of weird to me, right? So you're thinking like, oh, how do you get it on your house Wi-Fi network? It doesn't have any kind of interface. Yeah. So first, it acts as a Wi-Fi host, and then it turns around and then it jumps onto your house Wi-Fi once you give it the you know the router password or whatever. Um, oh, okay, right. right. So it's like it, that's, but that's a, that's a problem that a lot of things are dealing with these days. You know, how do you get devices to talk to one another? That's how they got right. that to work. Um, there's a Spectrum article about this with the look and link, basically. But you know, mm-hmm. it's like basically you need you need new ways for devices to start talking to one another because out of the box you don't know, yeah, you yeah. Know, how to get it all hooked up, especially if there's no kind of interface you don't want like a little keyboard where you have to mm. you know one 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 two three three right right you know yep. <laughs> <laughs> doing like an old uh an old cell phone with the texting messaging <laughs> uh-huh. so yeah hey hey do you think there's um nsa um spy nsa backdoors built into this nest stuff it's oh, gotta be maybe not yet yeah. maybe it will be uh-huh. who knows uh-huh. <laughs> bastards uh, yeah Watch your uh, Internet of Things devices, folks. We know you're all fans. We know you're Internet of Things fans. Oh, yeah, I'm a huge fan. <laughs> yeah, huge fan. <laughs> I don't know. Some of our listeners could be out there. Make, if anyone's on the Nest team, I, I, I'm i uh, happy you made a lot of money. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
Unbelievable. Um, anything else going on this week? I don't know. We had so much, so many links between back then and now. It's like, yeah, I know. There's tons. I don't know. We're already well over our uh, amp hour capacity. We are. Mm. Uh, okay. Well, people can always check uh, our subreddit, which is reddit.com slash r slash the amp hour. And you can see all of the stories that didn't make it on the show today. Uh, and then you can also, you can link through to there. If you just go to w, uh, the amp hour.com, you'll, you'll also be able to get through to the, to the Reddit page. There's some good ones on here. Right? You know, have you seen the, uh, jobs movie, the Steve jobs movie? I have not, but I saw Waz's comment for it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so Waz's comment on that. Yeah. Yeah. Did you, did you see it? I have to, no, no, I haven't seen it yet. I'll have to, but apparently it's, it's shit. Like it, you know, well, it's not badly acted, but it's you know historically, it's it's all wrong as the was said, you know. And, yeah, uh, yep. yeah, it's a little. Uh, and his 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 reason for not uh, trying to fix it up for them is that he was sent the script, but because it was already scripted and written, yeah. he didn't want to. You know, uh, rocker. He yeah. Well, he he didn't want to impinge on their creative. <sighs> thing right it's they're the creator of this thing and well you know he wasn't so he yeah. just didn't want to whereas he's working on another movie apparently yeah where he gets to write the script or co-write it or you know work with them on the script from the beginning so that's a different creative endeavor yeah so he he just didn't want to step on the toes of the creative people who created the script he didn't want to come in and say oh this is all wrong 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 you got to change all the script it's all shit <laughs> you know he he just didn't well right, I that's can, why you send your I lawyer to that. do that right that's what... <laughs> right <laughs> all right i get really tired of the whole steve jo- like okay steve jobs yada yada okay whatever i get so tired of the hero worship stuff though i don't know i just i can't yeah all right i'll just go back and watch pirates there you go that's the way to do it. Pirates of, surely you've seen Pirates of Silicon Valley. I've, I've seen parts of it. I haven't seen the whole thing. But. Oh, you got to watch the whole thing. The the book, um, the book is um, it's not called Pirates of Silicon yeah, Valley. It's, it's else, uh, right? fi- uh, Fire in the Valley. Fire by, in the Valley. I can't remember his name, but I read it donkeys okay. years ago. I've got a copy somewhere. Um, yeah, yeah, and it's you know it's nothing to do with it. It's dramatized, you know, but it's it's reasonably accurate. And the was says he kind of likes it. You know, it's a it's it's not a bad movie. Yeah. So that one sort of gets the was thumbs up and Jobs gets the was thumbs down. Good enough for me, man. Yep. <laughs> if I'm absolutely. Gonna, if I'm going to hero worship anyone, it's going to be was. So. <laughs> right. Yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Well, uh, oh, boy. I got to go uh, defrost my house and my, my uh, work on contextual electronics some more. So. Sweet. Uh, next week, uh, we'll have uh, uh, Scott Driscoll of CuriousInventor.com. He'll be on the show. So, cool. Yep. Looking forward to it. Bye. Well, our fridge hasn't failed. Sorry, the door fell off. Um, yeah. <laughs> yes, it is. It does, right? I mean, <laughs> right. it's a normal fail it's mode of a of a fridge. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's only two things a fridge does. That's uh, keep things cold and, and keeps it shut. Oh. <laughs>